I actually started filming this video and then I decided that I want coffee. Now I'm good. It's kind of cruel that the summer is almost over. But I guess that's okay. We have one more month left and I hope it's gonna be amazing. But today we're talking about my July books that I've read this month and that's actually my first reading wrap up on this channel in like four months making videos that's crazy because like I actually planned on doing wrap ups every single month before but by the time I was actually ready to do this it was too far into the next month if you know what I mean this month I'm actually filming this the day before the month will end and I'm actually reading a new book right now but I don't think that I will finish it before the month will end so I guess uh, that's gonna be actually fair. Okay so in July 2022 I've read nine books and actually like ten but one of them was like novella and it's like super short so I don't really like kind of include it. And by the way if you're interested I'm 50 books out of 55 into the year and I'm so close to finish my reading challenge that's crazy by the way you will not see a lot of books in person today because i'm actually addicted to reading on my phone i don't know why i guess that just because i don't have a chance to put my hands on a lot of like physical copies it's just really hard to get books in belarus right now so the first thing in july i actually finished the shadow me series i remember myself starting it when I was like younger, like 14, 15. And I remember I actually read like maybe two books and then I stopped. I don't know why I stopped. I guess maybe because I wasn't able to get any more books. So I only got two and I guess they were also ebooks. And this year everyone like obsessed on TikTok and I kind of like, oh my God, I never finished the series. And yeah. So in July, I've read Restore Me, Defy Me, Imagine Me, and Believe Me, but I don't count Believe Me because it's like a really short novella and uh, I don't really, I don't know, that's kind of, I gave Restore Me four stars, Defy Me got five stars, and Imagine Me got four stars. Basically, the whole series for me is like four star read. I don't know, I would really like it when it was 15, but right now I'm kind of into more mature books, if you know what I mean, like new adult. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know what the series is about, it's kind of like a dystopian story type, and it's about Juliet. She's 17, and she has this like super weird powers she basically can kill by the touch there was an accident and she actually killed someone and this is why she's in the cell and no one knows that she actually this like monster that she really thinks she is and she's like in the cell for almost a year and then surprisingly she gets like a roommate like a cellmate yeah, and of course someone wants to use Juliet as a weapon and she kind of has to decide if she's a good or a bad and how she wants to use her powers. I wish I could spoil you, but I will not. But as we like talking about the books that I read and they are like the last in the series, I wish I could like talk more, but I just don't want to spoil, you know. Right after I finished the Shatter Me series, I decided I need a reread and I decided to go back to one of my favorite romance series and it's Paper Princess. I guess that's called The Royals just the whole series called The Royals. This is actually like a Russian edition. I only have the first book. It's like a cheesy kind of type of romance, you know, when I will describe you the book, you will like get why I think it's kind of cheesy. Ella Harper is a survivor, a pragmatic optimist. She spent her whole life moving from town to town with her mother, struggling to make ends meet and believing that someday she'll climb out of the gutter. After her mother's death, Ella is truly alone. Until Colin Royal appears, plucking Ella out of poverty and tossing her into his posh mansion among his five sons, who all hate her. Each royal boy is more magnetic than the last, but none as captivating as Reed Royal, the boy who is determined to send her back to the slums she came from. So can you now tell that it's kind of cheesy, like, you know, poor girl, five rich, really spoiled boys, one house, eh, eh, 
you know, but it, it, it's really good. You know, if you haven't read this, I, I definitely recommend it. It's a five star read for me. Still one of my favorite romance series. It's really, really good. So the series itself contains six books. I've read only two. It's truly like kind of feels cheesy but it's not it's like a really really good plot and i really really like it i'm pretty sure that i will read them until i will be like 40 maybe even 50 i don't know so by the second part of the month i decided that i want to go back to summer reads kind of like get on the summer vibe again and since i have this like big ass summer tbr i ended up with summer love. So in this story we're going back and forth between past and present. So this story is about four complete strangers in their 20s. They ended up on Nantucket in the summertime to work there and basically they rented basement rooms in the same old hotel near the beach. This summer they became friends, some of them became lovers. 26 years later in the same hotel and Nick, one of the four original characters, now owns the hotel and now they all have children of their own. They have some secrets to share, some moments to remember and their children kind of have their own moment on Nantucket this summer. I actually had a really long process reading this book because it's from the third person and it's about all of the characters in the same time like it's not even like the chapters you read the chapter and it's about like four of them or like even not four of them but when it's like present you read about them and their children at the same time and it's kind of so confusing and so hard to read and a lot of like descriptions and stuff even though the story is like really interesting yeah basically i just really loved the vibe and reading this i kind of wanted myself to be there like you know this young adult living your best life after college working to save money yeah it was kind of boring but i gave it four stars just because of the vibes and the atmosphere it was really really nice and i really think it was not that bad the next book actually a five star read and i actually really really liked it it actually came out in july and it called the dead romantics by ashley poston so the main character of this book is florence and she's a ghostwriter for one of the most popular romance authors out there. After a really bad, shitty breakup, she no longer believes in love. And right before the book deadlines, she meets her new editor who won't give her an extension on the deadline. And right after this, she gets a really bad phone call from her family. Her father is dead and she needs to come home. The small town she haven't visited in 10 years and people she kind of afraid of because they never understood her. So when she's finally at her family's funeral home, their family business, she finds a ghost standing at the front door. So yeah, it's kind of like a mystical realism. She can see ghosts. And as the description says, romance is most certainly dead, but so is her new editor, and his unfinished business will have her second guessing everything she's ever known about love stories. I will actually leave you my review on the screen so you can read it, because I actually wrote a big ass review on Goodreads for this book. What? The next book also was on my summer TBR and is Summer of Broken Rules. And what got me the first time? The first sentence in the description is a romance novel inspired by the songs of Taylor Swift. Yes. Swifty is here for this. So Meredith family annual game of Assassin and Martha Svenjar during a summer wedding is the perfect chance to honor her sister's legacy and finally join the world again. But when she forms an alliance with a cute groomsman, she's at risk of losing both the game and her heart. I gave this book four and a half stars. The Taylor Swift references chef's kiss basically it's a lot about grief but also family friendship summer romances that can or cannot become something more after i wish i could have such a big family and a friend group to kind of spend the whole summer with and play some cool games and the last book that i've read this month finally the spanish love deception 
I mean, I've seen this book all over Instagram. A few of my bookstagram friends like really love this book and I was kind of like, I don't know, I was just avoiding it somehow for so long and I decided it's finally time. It's finally time to read it. I had it as an ebook version and I'm just like, yeah, that's that's the time. It's a four star read for me again. Catalina desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding, especially since she lied about her new American boyfriend and now everyone she knows, including her ex and his fiance, will be there and eager to meet him. She only has four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic and aid in her deception. Enter Arne Blackford, her tall, handsome, condescending, 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 condescending colleague who surprisingly offers her step in. She'd rather refuse. Never has there been a more aggravating, blood boiling, and insufferable man. But Catalina is desperate, and Aaron looks like her best option. It was a really good, like, kind of animus to lovers, but it's like really not animus to lovers. If you will read into the book, you will understand why. I, I will, I will not lie and tell you guys, I'm in love with Aaron. He's, he's so good at treating her in the book. So it was a really hot, slow burn, really nice romance book, but I gave it only four stars, not five, because the writing was a little bit poor. It was really repetitive. I guess the author mentioned his blue eyes and how tall and big he is like 100 times during the book. I understand 100%, especially if it's her first book. I'm pretty sure it is. And she's also like a Spanish speaking author, I'm pretty sure. I hope I'm not wrong. So I went home, so I understand. I'm myself trying to write a book in English, and English is now my first language. So basically, it's still really, really cool that we have this type of book. And it's a lot of Spanish in here, a lot of like Spanish culture, which is super cool, even though I, I don't understand Spanish and I don't know nothing about Spanish culture. It was still really, really cool. Yeah, guys, so basically these are my July reads. I was really happy. It was a really good reading month. I enjoyed every single read I had. I'm so excited for August. I really want to finish this reading summer strong like bombing and uh i don't know i will try my best to read like more summer reads but maybe i should actually try to create a tbr i don't know maybe i will think about it yeah thank you for hanging out with me today and please if you're able comment your favorite july read because maybe i will use it as my august read i'm also like craving for some new books see you in august that's crazy uh yeah Horrified looks from everyone in the room